We are here and we are today discussing very special. Remember, for the last uh, three days, we say we started on Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Today is the final leg of doing a special program on the Holland. We discussed seeing matters of devolution. So we are doing the final stage of the special program that we specially prepared for you, courtesy of Kenya Human Rights, in conjunction with uh, Trocare. And uh, today we are discussing the budget. We are looking at the budget. And the question we are trying to look at, what are these stages once again? Remember, on Saturday we talked about only four stages, but we have four more to go. So we are looking at what are the stages of budget making process, what are the challenges, where is the space of citizen participation? Do you feel part of the budget making process or not? If not, tell me why. If yes, all right, what have you done? Talk to me. Remember, end month as it is now, every family is busy drawing and putting into figures so that they can actualize their their development agendas. We can actualize what we want, be it that it is food we're buying, be it school fees you're finishing to pay, be it a plot you, you're finishing to pay, be it a car or a mortgage, whatever. So there is a budget line to something. That is the same thing that happens at our county level, even at our ward level. If we want a borehole, we need money to follow that. If we want a school, we need money to follow that. ECD. If we want a health facility, we need money to follow that. So how do we do this money? How do we ensure that this money follows what we want done so that we want a development? Remember, ECD is devolved, health is devolved, agriculture is devolved. Ah, all right, I'm forgetting the other one. <laughs> the, the guests are going to remind me. But my dear, without much ado, let me usher in the guest in the studio with me so that they can help us understand and I love starting with the ladies because we always say ladies first good morning morning to you, <laughs> morning to you Jacqueline that's really? nice yeah they were even the first to <laughs> know that Jesus had resurrected yeah, so it's important that we go first ever yes all right to remind us your name dear I'm Christine Gishure the executive secretary justice and peace commission at diocese of Nairobi good morning, good okay um Madama Joseph, um, from the Catholic Justice and Peace Commission, and uh, here to present on behalf of Kenya National Human Rights Kenya Human Rights Commission. Asante sana. Mm -hmm. You you both welcome and Asante sana, and I'm happy that you're both coming from the the, the the same background, the Justice and Peace Commission background. So that means we have a, a wealth of information. My dear, I don't want this program to go without you taking your call and dialing 0731889185 or sending a text message on 22669. Or better still, let me hear your, your thoughts on our Facebook page. Remember, the program is Morning Tide, and this is the final leg of the special program we are doing courtesy of Kenya Human Rights Commission in conjunction with the Troc Care. Christine, when we talk of budget making process, we see citizen participation. We do budget, right? It's end month, so definitely we're budgeting. Even if it's just one bob, we're budgeting. So once again, I know it's a question that we keep on tr struggling to, to understand. Where is our voice? Now that we're doing the budget at the county level, now that at the ward level, we're deciding on what projects we want. Where is my voice as a Wanjiko? Thank you very much, Jacqueline. One thing that I should say is that the Constitution stipulates about public participation. And even before we go very far, it is very, very important to quote uh, Section 201, where it say, talks about the sovereign power of the people, either by direct participation or indirect participation. However, the challenge we have is that many people do not know that they have a right to participate in the budget making process at the county. Mm -hmm. Also in regard to that, many people do not know that even the constitution has not provided uh, a, a particular uh, uh, particular sections which clearly outline how the public should participate. Mm -hmm. Because the public should not participate by just attending a meeting. 
<laughs> by listening. Mm -hmm. There are so many ways through which the public should should participate. Mm -hmm. And allow me also talk about the national values that we have. Mm -hmm. If we, if we talk about the the national values as enshrined in our constitution, mm -hmm. in regard to obeying the rule of law, in regard to democracy and participation of the people, then the people also need to be told at what level should they participate and how should they engage. Should they only be seen and not heard? Mm -hmm. We have our registrations in Chapter 8 which also talk about uh, issues of public participation. Mm -hmm. But I, like I said earlier, we are not very clear. Allow me, for example, identify one or two things that I should be able to say. Sorry. That the public mm -hmm. in our country are taxpayers, irrespective of whether the, 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 their tax is in form of a shilling or two. Mm -hmm. Therefore, without discrimination, these, these taxpayers who are the citizens then should be consulted widely and in an open manner. Mm -hmm. But you find that in most cases, they are not consulted widely, they are not uh, consulted openly, yet they are the taxpayers. You also realize that most of these forums, they, they, they are not involved. Either because the timing comes in too late or the advert is made through TV or a newspaper that they had read by and therefore you find that the people who dominate are actually from either a political party, one political party or an interest group. Mm -hmm. And I think the good way to go is emphasize more on public participation and what it entails. So if, if that happens, can I, can I uh, for instance, even take my county to court and say, no, that is not right? Do I even know as a citizen? Do I even know that if, for instance, I am not able to read and write, and they put it somewhere in a public, uh, in a in a gazette notice, or they put it on a television, and I don't even have that, but on this day we are participating. I mean, we are having a forum at this place. Can I sue my my? <laughs> can I can I take my county to court for that, Christine? You have a right to do so because when we are talking about public consultations, we are saying that there must be a clear and specific purpose for why we need to engage them. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it is important to prepare the citizenry. In, in, in our ward level, mm -hmm. we have representatives from the wards. So these people should be able to prepare the citizenry in that particular ward and tell them, well, from this period on, we should be engaged in matters of the budget-making process, mm -hmm. and we would like to prepare you in terms of the ideas that you can give in, mm -hmm. in terms of decisions, in terms of prioritization of, of your needs, and in terms of even airing that which you are supposed to air. Mm -hmm. but, but you find that we do not have at the world level an organized system whereby people are prepared before. And I like saying this. In most cases, we're, 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 when, for example, a president is visiting somewhere, mm -hmm. we have a lot of mobilization on the uh, on the ground level mm -hmm. we are told the president will be visiting on this day we urge you come one come all mm -hmm. then why are we not prepared in the same way to be told mm -hmm. at this time of the month at this time of the year mm -hmm. we should be getting ourselves engaged in matters of budget making mm -hmm. and therefore as the taxpayers we want to call upon you as the residents of this particular county we want to call upon you to be prepared because once the sessions are called you should be ready with your own information and therefore you find because I said at the beginning that there are no uh, laws governing the minimum uh, levels of participation, then you find that the, the public is not enlightened. They do not know, they do not even think that is their business. They say, we elected those people, they should go and make the budget for us and provide services for us. But they're the technocrats of our own Christian. They are the technocrats, yes, yes, but they are not the wearers of the shoe. The wearer of the shoe is, at the introduction, you talked about early childhood education, yes. you talked about health, and many other things that have been devolved, of the 10 functions mm -hmm. that have been devolved to, 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 to the counties. I am the one who feels, what's my felt need? Probably, between, be, 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 between an early childhood mm -hmm. class mm -hmm. and, and water, whereby as a mother, I have to travel the whole day, kilometers, looking for water, only to come back home with a jerry can. I should go there and say, these are my needs. I, I'm better placed if you provide water than you provide, uh, let's talk about electricity. I'm better placed when, other than my girl in the current wave of insecurity traveling so many kilometers to an early childhood center, I would be able to say, is it possible to have at least two or three early childhood centers in the world? Mm -hmm. Let them do the mathematics. 
when it comes now to doing the estimates, the incomes, the expenditures, then let them do that. But they can, but can they include Wajiko's voice in regard to what she needs? So Wajiko needs to sit there and say she, what she needs, needs to say what because even as she sits in the ward, even as she sits in the village, there are particular things that she knows which are supposed she, she, the services, the critical services that she's supposed to have. Mm -hmm. She knows about them, mm -hmm. and therefore the technicians should only say she talked about health, she talked about education. Can we now? Go and see to it that in the uh, budget making process we are able to allocate money for early childhood edu education and for health. Mm -hmm. Now, my question Christine has just said something very important that if a senior politician is coming, president is coming, we'll all leave our children, we'll get out of school, we'll stand by the uh, roadside, clap, sing, and all that. Why is it therefore that we don't sit at these barrels and discuss? Is it that we are not interested? Is it that the timing are bad? Is it that we're just tired of having our views and nothing? Are we tired of the same minutes being taken and no action? We want a school, we want a school, we want hospitals, we want ABCD, but nothing happens. I need to hear you talk to me, 0731889185. Or is it because that when we, you know, you sit next to uh, Urezo, he might throw something to you, but when you go to these barazas, if you didn't have food, you still not have food in, on your table. Why is it that we have this diverted, you know, when it comes to politicians we go? We go to church and we discuss issues. We go to small Christian communities and we discuss all that. And church is devout. So is our governing uh, structure at, the, at the, 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 the national and the county level. But why is it that we are not participating? Talk to me, 731 889 Talk to me on our Facebook page. I need to hear your voice. I need to hear what your thoughts are so that we see, is it the, the way we are doing it, which is not right, or is it that it is too technical? Modama. Yeah. Uko. Niko. Salama sana. Ah, Santi. Stages ziko nyingi. Yeah. Are they are they so hard? <laughs> are this what is required? I mean, last Saturday we we talked about the four, the first four stages. Probably you could just mention them briefly so that you take us to the uh, the other remaining four. Um, Jackie, thank you for mm -hmm. uh, for bringing me in mm -hmm. uh, in this discussion. This is a very serious discussion for the citizens of this country. Mm -hmm. And uh, may I so uh, maybe to pick from uh, a bit from what Christine, my colleague, has just said. Mm -hmm. uh, in this process, uh, civic education is paramount, mm -hmm. and the county government and the national government are taxed by the the relevant legislations mm -hmm. to ensure that the people are informed so that mm -hmm. they are able to play a meaningful role in this uh, process that uh, affects each and one, every one of us. Uh, uh, to begin with, um, uh, these stages are discussed uh, last, uh, last time uh, in the last uh, uh, program, mm -hmm. uh, one to four. Uh, begins with the planning, and this planning is very, very uh, paramount, very important. And uh, this uh, stage one of planning, uh, setting broad policy guided directions, uh, is um, is kick start uh, started by by the uh, section one twenty eight mm -hmm. uh, subsection two of the Public um, uh, Public Finance Management Act 2012 uh, that has, uh, requires that um, the, the, the cabinet, uh, the ex county member, uh, executive member for finance to issue out a circular that uh, tells all the stakeholders involved in matters pertaining to public finance or budgeting to be aware that this program, uh, this uh, process has begun. And so this is not a favor that is done uh, to the people and uh, uh, in the section, in other sections of the, the Public Finance uh, 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 Management Act requires that uh, this information or communication must be done uh, properly, must be done in a language that the common manager or the common citizen is able to, to make sense of, of this. Mm -hmm. So the, the planning is, is important. Is This is where uh, all the, the things Thinking, all the, the, the entities uh, um, uh, playing a role in matters pertaining to finance uh, give their input mm -hmm. where they are able to, to identify their priority needs uh, according to to their thinking and to the according to the local uh, people concerned, so they they, they are able to, to 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 give out these uh, these arrangement these uh, priorities it, itemized uh, items that uh, for budget that need to be considered by the county government. The second stage is of course overall estimation of the county government revenues and the expenditure. Here. Um, 
the father now they, they begin the process after uh, after they have identified the priority uh, issues that needs to be put in the government they are able now to see uh, what be, where do we begin and who uh, how many of us we are in this uh, in this process mm -hmm. uh, the civil society the government the various entities within the county government uh, that are supposed to, to make their contribution mm -hmm. And so they are able now to, 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 to read from the same script and able to, to see where they are going to synergize and they are working together. Mm -hmm. um, from the estimation and uh, uh, revenue expenditure, revenue seeing the amount of money that is available and what they need to spend for, then uh, stage three gets where uh, establishing the financial and economic priorities. I need to narrow down. Econ economist tells us that... Uh, the needs versus the resources available. Um, always the resources are inadequate. And therefore it demands the planners to prioritize that which must come first, which is the first among the first. And so uh, it is in stage uh, three, they are able now to shortlist that these are the activities that need to be done in this financial year for the people to really make a progress from what they were able uh, they were able to do from the previous uh, financial uh, year. Uh, so those are the first uh, three uh, stages, and I'm picking from today, uh, from stage four, mm -hmm. uh, the preparation, consolidation, and submission of itemized budget to the account assembly, mm -hmm. which is uh, key. Mm -hmm. Tell yeah. so us now that what happens in stage four. Okay. Now that we already know that, so that Christine can tell us, so what do I do in that stage? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, in stage uh, in stage four, mm -hmm. these were uh, the, all the uh, the estimates, the final, the budget estimates and uh, expenditures that uh, uh, proposed expenditures of uh, according to the uh, projects and uh, programs that have been identified by the key stakeholders that are presented to the county assembly. This county assembly is the parliament of the of the local area that is represents the people, and so uh, it is here that the the budget proposal from uh, the county executive member for finance is able to be discussed, is able to be uh, evaluated, to be seen whether it is, in, it is reflecting, it is reflecting uh, to the uh, policy strategy paper that uh, each county must have submitted by 28th of February. Uh, each year, and so it is. These budget ex estimates are, are, are evaluated vis-à-vis -vis the uh, the strategy paper that was presented earlier by the county uh, government to see whether they are in line and they are in tandem. And so the duty of the county assembly here is to either uh, pass these budget uh, estimates uh, in in their entirety or make some recommendation to the cabinet uh, executive cabinet member uh, uh, member for, for finance in the county um christine probably if i could come to christine so in this stage that uh, madame is talking about what is the role of the citizen there are we, are we, is our st a voice still valid at that stage or our voice at this stage is passive? Now here I go back to what you had said, Jackie, about the technocrats. Mm -hmm. you, because you realize that this the public, the citizenly, is not involved from the beginning of the process to the end. And you'll see even as he gets to the others. Mm -hmm. And this is where we, we have a very big challenge because when we talk about the citizenly identifying the specific preferences, that is not all. It is important for the citizenry to be involved in the formulation, in the uh, enactment, and even in the actual implementation. Mm. Because w w when, for example, even in an ordinary situation, and it's very unfortunate because the Kenyan culture does not work in the ordinary way. <laughs> Sometimes we don't obey the rule of natural justice. And I give this simple scenario. When you leave home and you tell your house manager to do one, two, three things, you will be in the entire process. You will not just be there at the end of it to evaluate because the design, the original idea comes from you. Mm -hmm. So you find that we, with the current provision where we are having, there is very, very little input from the citizenry. 
And this is where now we have a very big bl- we have a very big gap because the citizenry do not know why why should it I be involved in one two three things and again they do not know even at what level they should be involved in the particular matters that have been discussed on and I want to quote a very good example even on this particular level of, of, of the planning for the estimates and things like that mm-hmm. you find that today the venue is in a school A which is very far for example I have to pay bus fare to get to the school and I don't have the money mm-hmm. or what I have is torn between should I use it for my bus fare to go and listen or should I use it for my family then the next day the venue is changed so we, we lack consistency because we, we, we were used to like I would say we were used to going to radio our mini grounds mm-hmm. for these presentations then the next minute I think that in the next meeting we'll be there but we've been changed to safari park or some other place we lack consistency in the way in which we do our things and this is where we have a very big mismatch mm-hmm. and that is why I keep insisting that as much as there are no laws, the public is also not informed on their participation. And this is where we have the gap. And I think it will be very, very important for the people to know that during the preparation and the consideration of all these, it is important that they themselves are not left out. We cannot leave everything to the county executive committee member for finance. Because the, whatever, let's say, in terms of the, the, the projects are, that, that have been agreed on, on. Sure, sure. These, the, the, these p- p- programs or projects will come down to the people. Mm-hmm. So we cannot leave them only at the oversight role whereby they will say no. By the way, this is not what we needed. Or probably we said yes, like the area example of the early childhood center. We need three classrooms. Mm-hmm. Why should I wait until they are built only to realize that there were only two? that were actually built and yet in our proposal we had talked about three so it is important that we are involved at every level from from the from the planning stage to the formu- formulation to the completion and to the evaluation for me i would rather say that from a public man- uh, project management point of view that we have to go the entire cycle and the public should not miss remember one key point i said they are the taxpayers and therefore it is important to ensure that their money is used to the do, last do, coin do the taxpayers feel feel sorry for their money? Do they feel their money? If they don't come for this, is it that we don't feel our money? (laughs) There are those who feel and there are those who don't feel and there are those who, like we said, you you know, again we are coming from a culture and I'm sorry we we, we have a culture whereby probably from the political arena Mm -hmm. whereby when there is a rally I'll be provided with transport Mm -hmm. I'll be provided with some refreshments Mm -hmm. or a meal Mm -hmm. I'll be provided, I'm told, even these days there is a listening and a standing allowance because you call me to a stadium there is no seat so how, how do I how, how do you make sure that I have a temporal seat no no that culture <laughs> and these days you will even mobilize people for a certain function and they ask you is there transport is there lunch is there an allowance coming from that is very hard for our people our people need to t- ch- change their attitude and in fact for me I tell them you're the people who rate those who eat eat because you don't ask but I would rather go sit in a meeting no matter how ma and know that the particular project that will come to my area after all will benefit me and the future generations. So we have a group of people who know, we have a group of people who don't know, we have a group of people who don't know and they don't want to know and they don't care. Because uh, ignorance is bliss. Yeah, <laughs> what they do, many of them, Jackie, will wait for 2017 mm-hmm. and say, they, they, they forget their role. And, and, and I keep saying this, allow me to say this in, in very due respect. Mm-hmm. Our leaders are supposed to be our servants, not okay. our bosses. Because when I talked about sovereignty, I said it is either direct or indirect. Indirectly, I elected my MCA. I elected my MP. But does not, that does not mean that I gave him entire freedom. He should actually report back to me, being my servant. Because he is earning his salary through, my, through again, the very tax that I pay, and I gave him the job. We should, be, we should become a questioning society. We should want to read more and find out more. Otherwise, if we don't, and even today, you'll find that in places whereby people are more informed, they, 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 they seek more questions, they seek more clarifications. But with our kind of people, they don't want feedback with our kind of the, 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 the class that we are having at the county government. Many of them don't want to seek feedback from the public, and they don't want questions. 
from the public, even to an extent of, of asking. And the kind of projects we want to do should be gender responsive. Gender responsive how? Let me compare again the case of a health facility, the case of an early childhood center, and the case of a stadium. I'm not saying that we should not have sports and games, but to, uh, to, to some extent you realize that when you have a stadium, the, the, the people who will benefit belong to one gender more than when it, there was a school or a health facility. So we need a questioning society. And that is why we are having these kind of programs. People who should be able to question, even go a little further and say, is this what is stipulated in the Constitution? Is this what the government of the day, in this case, the Jubilee Manifesto, is it all about this? Is it in regard to the Millennium Development Goals? Is it in regard to the Vision 2030? Yes, when we put the, all that together, then we will have people up there who we refer to as our bosses, but I've said they should be our servants, knowing that they are having a question, an informed citizenry, and therefore they have to do things in the right way. But how do we question when we don't know what is contained in the Vision 2030? We don't know the MTG. We don't... Who, who is a, whose responsibility is to ensure that the Wanjikos no Mudama? <laughs> because what 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 Christian is, is putting is, is very valid. It's true we need to awake to that. But so, uh, thank you, Jackie, mm -hmm. uh, for this. Actually, we we can say a lot. We can have a very good uh, policies, legislation, cons all this without the people's uh, being aware of them or taking interest because patriotism is a requirement is a is a requirement of each one of us mm -hmm. to love your country and loving your country means going flat to mm -hmm. do what a responsible citizen should do uh, uh, allow me to say this yeah uh, and to just to echo what uh, christine has just said in one in part that uh, under uh, article 10 mm -hmm. that uh, itemizes the national values and principles that guides this nation, this country, under the 2010 Constitution, participation is not a favor, is one of the ingredients, one of the key fundamentals in this country. And so, um, uh, coming to back to the relevance of participation is that uh, before even the submission of the budget estimates to the national to the count assembly, the people are supposed to give it to be given an opportunity to go through and to see whether what the views, what they did, what they presented was as, as it is captured. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the county government Act 2012, uh, Section uh, 88, allow me to, to read mm -hmm. part of it. Yes, uh, citizens' right to petition and challenge. Mm -hmm. Citizens have a right to petition the county government on any matter under the responsibility of the county government. Mm -hmm. Sub, uh, subsection 2 uh, reads, citizens' petitions shall be made in writing to the county government. And subsection 3 uh, say county uh, county legis uh, legislation shall give further effect to this. So um, what I'm saying here, that uh, you ask, or after the, this presentation, after this discussion of the budget uh, uh, budget proposals to the counter assembly, where is the role of the citizen? The role of the citizen has a, the, the citizen, the Mwanainchi, has a right. Uh, has a right under Section 88 of the, uh, the, the uh, County Government Act 2012 that is derived from Article 119 of the Constitution, mm -hmm. where everything emanates, every, where everything comes from. So the, the, the citizens has got, uh, at all stages of this uh, uh, public uh, 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 discourse, mm -hmm. the citizens has a room, as an opportunity to interrogate, to inquire, and to make challenges where he feels that his views has no, have not been captured. Mm -hmm. and then I would like to add on to that, sorry, and yeah. say that one of the principles of devolution is in uh, timely access to information and yes. services. Mm -hmm. So if we talk about timely access to information and services, surely why bring the so-called Mindeleo closer to Anjiko and yet she, do, she, she, she does not partake of it? And what we are lacking in, in most places, is access, mm -hmm. even to these documents. Mm -hmm. Access to information is very critical. I, I do not know how many counties are having existing websites, mm -hmm. and I do not know how many people are, are, are even able to, to, to engage and interact with those websites. Why I say this is because the, there is need for county governments to establish other ways through which people can give input, other than being physically present, or through the direct representation. Mm -hmm. 
because right now we are here and you have asked people to call in or send their text messages and I can see text messages coming in it doesn't mean that those, those people are here but if only we have other ways in which people are able to access this information by giving a, uh, and give their input then it is very important I also bring to you the, the other traditional thing that we have had that you will have a lot of bulky information for people to read you may not have that time why don't we even have in those county county governments a, a summarized execu an, a, a, an executive summary or a narrative high writing something which I would call an abstract that this is what we want to do we are doing this for one two three things things that are clearly put to the people because if we are not able to do that then you'll find as my friend here has said we will still go back and say and let us not forget that now there is a provision in our constitution whereby if Wanjiko does not complain someone else can go to court on behalf of Wanjiko uh -huh. There is somebody online. Let's hear who, who is this who wants to go to the court on behalf of Wanjiko. Hello, good morning. Hello. Morning. Morning. How are you? Fine, fine. Then you really get to talk about it. I'm bull bull. Yeah, but it's wicked. Bull, 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 what has happened? Talk to me again, Kate. I need to hear your voice. Kate is just uh, complimenting that you, you're doing good work. Thank you. Uh, I, need, I need to hear your voice. My student life number is 0731889185. Mbona twendi pale kwenye baraza katika gatu ziletu tukazumuza maswala ya bajeti shida iwapi sauti ya wanjiko iwapi. Sufuri sabatatu moja nani nani tisa moja nani uh, turn 073 Kate, I still want to hear your voice and all other people out there. The question that we are asking is that where is the voice of Wanjiko in all this process? Where is Wanjiko being heard? Is she being given her space? Does she have the courage enough to go and get her, sp her space? And I want to uh, just remind you, Article 35 of our Constitution talks about every citizen has the right to access to information held by the state, information held by other person, and required for the exercise or protection of any right or fundamental freedoms. Every person has the right to the correction or uh, deletion of untrue or misleading information that affects the person. So, sir, we have all this with us. And that's why we're asking, where's the citizen participation? Mother Amma, okay. now we have up to uh, uh, stage four. What does stage five give us? Let's first pick this. Maybe this is get back online. Sorry. Good morning. Hello, Radio Mini. Ma Radio Mini, yes. Good morning. Yes, it's Charles Friday from the Upper Kayole. Hey, Charles Friday, Mambo Bibi. Very sunny, Jackie. Nice to hear your voice as always. Thank you very much. Now, my question is this. Mm -hmm. Now, it's easier said than done to, for the citizen to, part uh, to, to participate in the uh, project and questioning and all that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, most of our people are ignorant of the Constitution. In fact, the majority of them don't know anything about Constitution. Mm -hmm. And I'm... Uh, I'm entirely not blaming them because uh, that is the that is ignorance, maybe lack of education, lack of money. Now my question is this: mm -hmm. Now what happens when politicians gang up in the in the county assembly? They gang up and they plan to give a certain person the contract, a uh, person who will do a shoddy job. Mm -hmm. Now, if a majority of them, maybe seventy percent of them, gang up. Mm -hmm their own personal benefits in that project. Mm -hmm. Now, what can the citizen do in that regard, surely? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Asante. Wow, Asante. Wanjiko metupiliwa mbali. Christy, yep. citizen participation is entirely, because you are you are every day with the, the Christians. Yeah. What happens in such a scenario that uh, that uh, Charles Friday is giving us? I mean, politician will gang up and say, we are giving this contractor because probably there is some kickback behind. So what do I do? Where is my voice? Can I complain? Who will hear me? <laughs> there are so many people to hear, mm -hmm. and it is okay to complain. We are in a democracy, and this has been provided for us. Mm -hmm. And I would want to quote from real-life examples. Yes. 
this may appear like history, but uh, history informs mm -hmm. the present. Mm -hmm. Whereby we, we, we had a joint program with the NCCK, CJPC NCCK. Mm -hmm. And uh, w what we were doing, we were doing social audit around 2010 up to 2011. Mm -hmm. And what we were doing was on CDF funding mm -hmm. and the projects that were on the ground. Mm -hmm. And what we did was to train the, the, the Wanjiku out there on what we call civilian oversight. Mm -hmm. So what they would do is, is, is go on the ground and gather information in regard to the projects that had been done by CDF. Mm -hmm. And you realize in some places there, were, there was disbrication. Something that was done under RASDAP mm -hmm. became a project of CDF. And what these people did was that we trained them on how to gather information, factual information, take up photographs of, of, of the same, mm -hmm. in, including having the budget estimates and actually what, what the, the money that was used during that time. Mm -hmm. and, and these people were able to petition. That is just one. Another program that we had, and, and specifically with the communical, a communical Center for Justice and Peace headed by Reverend Gadaka, mm -hmm. is that the people in Bere were trained. And one good case was whereby a bridge was supposed to be put up. And what the people, the, the kind of photographs they gave because they knew there was no bridge that was put up were just sto huge stones and huge rocks. A and now this is a modern bridge. <laughs> a a a and, a a a and these people, what they did is they, they decided, in the two cases I'm talking about, they decided to have a sitting with the CDFCs. That, that is... <laughs> The, the, the CDFCs, that is the Constituency Development Fund Committees, mm -hmm. and they told them, we are aware that certain projects were supposed to be undertaken. Mm -hmm. This has not happened as evidenced with this report. So where is the money? So, so you either tell us where the money is, <laughs> or we go to court. Mm -hmm. And these people are like, wait a minute, we did not know that there was somebody listening and uh, watching over us. And I, I want to tell you that w one of the cases even went to the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how far it has gone, mm -hmm. but with the other one, they had to redo the project. So it is possible. Other than sit there and say, we share. After all, even if I know it, there is nothing to do. You only need to identify the avenues. Mm -hmm. And there are so many people who are ready to provide services. Mm -hmm. We even have lawyers who will provide pro bono services. I agree with what my brother has said. People do not know where to go to. Or people will believe that everybody has been compromised. Mm -hmm. But it takes the courage of one. And with the proper access to information, you are able to know that I will be able to go to this people and then take the case forward. Mm -hmm. For us, what we do at, 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 at Justice and Peace is that we work very closely with the Kenya Human Rights Commission mm -hmm. and other organizations whereby such case, we, we refer such cases. Mm -hmm. And we, w when people come with such kind of complaints, we forward to them. For as long as this is for as long as it's factual, mm -hmm. because you're not going to tell us there was a project that was supposed to take two million or three million, mm -hmm. and this is what uh, has happened, and we think what has been used is about twenty thousand shillings, which has to be factual. We also don't refer without a second opinion. Mm -hmm. So it is something that may not take place overnight, mm -hmm. but there is need for people to know where to go. Mm -hmm. And that is what we are attempting to do. One of our programs at CJPC is building the capacity of our people, and especially in matters of governance. And it may not be possible for us to go to all the churches, but the, rich, the, the, few, the few that we are able to reach, we say this is the mustard seed. We, one person has had it. Let him spread this information to the others. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the moment these people know that there is nobody watching, then that is why the 70% of the politicians will come up and, and do something in their own favor. Mm -hmm. And again, we want to tell our people, Tafadhali msiogope, hi ni peseenu. And the moment Mukiendelea Kuogopa, the more these people will be so happy, they'll come to you in the next general elections with niceties and they'll tell you, don't you see what we did for you, what we did for you. Like I hear around MCAs are telling people, Nili wafanyia ni mewafanyia, Mulini chagua ni wafanyia. Yet we know the roles of the MCA. They have nothing to do with what they used to do previously when they were councillors. So the most important thing is he who hears, let him spread the message to the others. And for the lawyers out there, for the technocrats, out there who know the provisions in the uh, in the constituencies should, uh, should should be able to provide free services to the people so that they are more informed mm -hmm. 
0731889185. Let us take a commercial break when we come back, my dear. I want to hear your voice. Where, therefore, do we go? And at what stage, therefore, do we say that Wanjiko's voice can't do Sasa? Let's give the technocrat space. Let's take this commercial break. Radio Waomini, your radio. Are you looking for a shop, stall, office or business space to let or buy within the Nairobi CBD? Are you also looking for land and commercial property to buy in Nairobi and its environs? Then look no further than a ProConsult Properties. A ProConsult Properties are real estate agents and brokers dealing in sale and purchase of business, land, plot, commercial and residential buildings. We have shops, offices, and business spaces to let within the Nairobi CBD. We also have parcels of land, plots, commercial and residential buildings for sale in and around Nairobi, Karen, Ruiru, and Westlands. We also do rent collections and property management. Do not hesitate to call us today on 0714 Two five three zero seven three. A proconsult properties serving property owners and property seekers. A Christian radio station with a difference. Eighty-eight point three FM. My dear, remember the program still continues. We are on morning tide and we're having a special uh, program and we're discussing matters of devolution. And this is a special program, courtesy of Kenya Human Rights Commission in conjunction with uh, Troc Care. Obama. We yeah. have the budget process. You've not finished for us. Okay. We need to hear what is still in well, store for us. Uh, thank you, Jackie. We were able to discuss up to uh, stage four. Mm -hmm. Now I have five, six, and seven, and eight. Mm -hmm. uh, in stage five, this is the enactment, uh, enactment of uh, expenditures and, uh, and uh, revenue uh, proposals. Mm -hmm. um, in, in this uh, stage, basically, it is uh, the appropriation bill is brought to to the counter assembly for them to enact into into the finance uh, act or finance the finance bill is translated into act after being signed of course by the governor mm -hmm. and so these were the the whole proposal of budget making becomes a law becomes binding for it to be ready to go to the next stage which is budget implementation mm -hmm. Of course, the, which is stage six. Uh, in stage six, uh, budget implement, implementation entails uh, the implementation or the, the carrying out or the execution mm -hmm. of the various programs and projects that were suggested uh, during uh, the pro budget proposal making. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, here, yeah, uh, the, the matters pertaining to procurement. And allow me to, to, to remind my, the, the question of the listener uh, that under the Constitution, uh, Article 227, mm -hmm. uh, clearly space, uh, stipulates on how public procurement should be done mm -hmm. and anybody aggrieved has all the rights to go to petition to a court of law mm -hmm. uh, so uh, uh, stage six is that this is the implementation where the programs are carried out and of course uh, every stage there are reports to be filed there are reports to be, to be filed and in this process every uh, every quarter meaning every three months there is a comprehensive report that is supposed to be uh, to be to be given out to, to to tell the people or the consumers or the stakeholders how far uh, the the process uh, is going is being truthful uh, uh, to, to the objectives that were set outlined uh, in stage seven uh, it is a budget reporting, accounting, and monitoring. Uh, here is basically to establish whether the spending uh, is being uh, is happening, is being done. Was it done according to to the set uh, guideline? The budget, uh, the way the, the the spending is happening, mm -hmm. the way the procurement uh, has been done, whether it is faithfully uh, according to the to the law, mm -hmm. uh, to the law and to the policies mm -hmm. that were spelled out. And in in this, uh, it also it is important to know that in Every, also in this stage, the citizens uh, have a right at any stage to make their input, to make their contribution, or to make any challenge mm -hmm. that they feel that things uh, there is uh, in the execution of the budget, uh, there is a betrayal of the intentions of the people or the, the aspirations of the people. 
So in the in the in the in, the, in this stage seven, where the budget reporting and accounting and monitoring, which is very important, going uh, uh, gradually, overseeing whether the implementation uh, is going smoothly or any challenges that may be uh, may be encountered, how it can be overcome so that uh, the budget is not frustrated or is not sabotaged. And finally, the stage eight is the budget evaluation and air auditing. Mm -hmm. Here basically is about the review of the audit report by the civil society and the general uh, general public, uh, the general the stakeholders. How they have gone evaluate how what are their reports that he is emanating from the execution of the carrying of the completion of the the, the whatever has is being done f uh, to implement the the budget. So here they are able also to go back to to see whether uh, the the the, um, the principles and values of public finance as captured in Article 201 of the Constitution, whether they are being uh, faithfully also followed, because the Constitution becomes the benchmark, becomes the, our, 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 our running point where we can see, we can faithfully evaluate ourselves to see whether this budget process is serving uh, the, the legitimate uh, intentions of the people. Allow me to cut you short. There's somebody online for us. Good morning. Morning, morning. It's Charles Friday again. Yes, Charles Friday. I thank the gentleman for the budgetary procedure. I think we'll continue on, and I'm getting, uh, uh, I'm getting to know so much a lot about the budgeting. Mm -hmm. But I have a question to the lady about the quality assurance. Mm -hmm. Find the road is built, mm -hmm. and it's purely, uh, it's purely done. Mm -hmm. And after uh, one, one year or some month, then it is, uh, it is off. Mm -hmm. Now, I would like to ask in the, in the, in the county, mm -hmm. what is the quality assurance let go about? Thank mm -hmm. you. Asante Sana. Christian, that one is, is for you. He said specifically for you, quality assurance, because we have roads done, and then when we come back only a few months or even one year down the line, the roads are completely wasted. Modama, um, take us through, finish for us the budget so that uh, Christine can take up that, that response. Um, so the, the, these are the eight, is, uh, the eight stage. Uh, the eight stage. I've said it is the budget reporting, uh, accounting, and monitoring. The monitoring to any program uh, is very important because, uh, or evaluating uh, any program is very important because these we are able to do the cost benefit analysis and we are able to see uh, actually uh, what the priority uh, or, uh, itemized issues that uh, the the one inch or were able to ident identify from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Were they uh, faithfully accomplished? And if at all there is in a, in a gray area, how about how can we go about rectifying the situation mm -hmm. so that the people they are able to begin from there in the next planning of the next financial year? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Christine. Uh, before I ask Madam anything, I wanted to respond to Charles Friday. Quality assurance. Yes, yes, yes. In the Finance Management Act 2012, we talked about, mm -hmm. but five clearly stipulates on the Public Sector Accounting Standards Board. That is a quality assurance. Mm -hmm. I may not go into details about the composition of the membership mm -hmm. because we, we have many right from the Auditor General, the Intergovernmental Budget, and the Economic Council. There, there, there are so many, but allow me just talk about the functions of this particular board mm -hmm. and what it is supposed to do. First and foremost is to provide a framework. And here we are talking of a framework in regard to the management and accounting of the financial systems. Mm -hmm. And here you will find they will also provide the minimum standards of maintenance of proper books of accounts. However, I'm sure this person will say, yes, we have books of account, but the books of account will read money as stipulated in the budget. But when it comes to these particular roads, then we find they, 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 they are not functional, as he has said, one, one month or one year down, mm -hmm. you'll, you, you'll find that... Uh, they, they, they are not of use. Mm -hmm. This particular group is also supposed to publish and publicize the accounting and financial standards, mm -hmm. that which is supposed to be done by, 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 by the people who, who we want to believe that during the tendering process we, we come up with, with people who will actually apply to the letter chapter 6 of the constitution mm -hmm. that stipulates about matters to do with the integrity, leadership and integrity. And <coughs> then you find that th these particular people also should be able to, to, 
to, to actually provide for transparency whereby if indeed they find at the tendering and it's very unfortunate because the tendering process has never been transparent and that is why my brother has said that you'll have roads going down because I'll tell Jackie there's a tender here uh, why don't you tender under the name of this company and then I'll tell you you can have another name of, a, of, of another company and I'll tell Modama can you tender at two shillings when it is at five shillings and then we say a ah, tendering process what do we say best quality for, 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 for low money mm -hmm. we are saying that with the monies that are going to the county and that is why I want to insist that if only the public were to be involved in all the eight stages mm -hmm. because they are the people who are on the ground they are the people who will be able to, to see hey, and the way we saw that Rory Mm -hmm. In the meeting, in the estimates, mm -hmm. we had talked about a hundred tons. But what we have seen, even if we are not counting, we are not good in mathematics, that is about 50 tons. Mm -hmm. We should be able to have the, 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 the public in all the stages and particularly in the implementation. Mm -hmm. So therefore, when you find that a road was not worthy and if you have the documents, like I said, access to all uh, documents, you'll be able to say, I sat in the meeting from the planning stage to the implementation stage. What was planned for the estimates that were provided is not what actually was implemented. Therefore, then the public will have a good say. But if we go out there and see a dilapidated road and you were never involved in the budget cycle, we may not be in in an informed position to question. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and so that, it is important that as much as it, 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 we, we are not provided for, sometimes we need to insist on getting our right. Otherwise, they will not provide for us because they know that by, by letting us get to know the information, having access to information and the documents, then we are going to question more. But I insist it is important that we are able to question more so that at one point when we, we see that a road or a water tap or probably a, a, a school with the sinking roofs, then we should be able to say this is not what, what had been provided for in the estimates. Mm -hmm. Well, somebody says that if you don't put your thoughts into into action, then therefore you'll only be grumbling. Let us not be grumbling, citizen, and still wake up. As we go for uh, a break so that we get the update uh, from the news team, Simon Wahome, Mwanawa, Sam, Totomlango, Kuba, Taxis. Devolution spirit is good, but the people implementing are selfish, e.g., when making budget, what does common man eat? Um, common man want food, health, uh, shelter, simple things. What do they do? Hike the price so no need to take part. <laughs> All right, I want us to take a short break. Join our news team. They give us the update on what is happening around. Don't leave yet because when you come back, I give our guest another round of five minutes before I tell them bye-bye out of the studio right now. There is a candle in every soul. This is the morning tide. All right, we have the next five minutes before our guest leaves the studio, and we are discussing matters of budget making, and we're looking at the processes of budget making. Remember, this program is sponsored by Kenya Human Rights Commission in conjunction with the True Care. Mudama, you have one more last stage that you need to take us through before we say bye bye. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, fine. This stage eight, uh, there was one bit that was remaining, uh, which is to mention uh, the role of the counter assembly. Mm -hmm. uh, as it is the nature and the fundamental uh, duty of uh, the legislature, mm -hmm. at the county level, they have got a role at oversight and to see, uh, to react or to debate the audit reports that comes out from the budget process. Mm -hmm. And so it is here that they are able to summon the, the various county accounting officers or the ent financial entities within the county to really explain some areas that uh, were not, uh, are not reflecting the true uh, position uh, of the county in, a, in, the, in the transparent manner, the way it's supposed to be carried out. Mm -hmm. And it's also is important to mention here that the role 
uh, of the controller of budget as uh, as uh, as captured in, uh, in article 228 of the constitution is very key is very key not only at the county level but also at the national level because if at all there are some gray or some questions uh, that are serious questions that arises uh, uh, in regard to the budget process then he can withdraw he can withdraw money or he can fail to, uh, to allow money to be transferred to the uh, to the county uh, government so uh, the, this bit of the budget evaluation and auditing is very very important this is the stage that informs us whether we were able to got it or we failed it mm -hmm. and where we need to go to the drawing board mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, Christine, uh, Simon Mahome said, remember, that yes, we know what we want as the Wanjikos, but when these big shots sit, they put things, they hike the prices, so there is no need of taking part. How do you ensure that the likes of Simon Mahome here comes back to track? I would like to tell Simon Mahome, Mwanasam Toto, from Langokubo taxis, that better a little light than no light at all. Mm -hmm. Light your candle, I light mine, and together we have daylight. Mm -hmm. So he should not give up. He should make an effort, no matter how. Because like we have said, there are so many provisions. It's only that the common monarchy does not know that those provisions have been made. And one thing that m m my brother should have also said is that the budget cycle, as they learned from the, 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 the previous presenters, mm -hmm. begins on the 1st of, of September, mm -hmm. meaning in August of every year, there should be heightened preparations at the counties mm -hmm. and goes all the way up to July and the period of December of the, of the, other, of, of the following year. And in most cases, it will be difficult to enter very late into a particular process. So it is important for, for Simon Wahome, aweze kusema atafanya lolote awezalo badala kukaa chini na kushika mikono tu. Kwa sababu tukiwa na watu wawili watatu ambao wana maoni ama nia kama zile za Simon Wahome, people who are giving up too early, then everybody else will give up at the expense of the crop that is already in power, at the expense of the people who are already doing that which they are doing. Mm. Because we indeed, we know very well, many of them are not able. And I want to give a very uh, good example. In Kiambu County, there was a lot of heat in regard to the finance bill. And we had the Kiambu Interfaith, who actually, after having all the facts about the finance bill in the county, lobbied so much that today we no longer hear issues. It, it, it took the heart of one person, two people, and together they were combined and they made an effort. So this is what I say. And even the Bible is very clear when you read from the book of Second Kings, the story of the four lepers. He, he, having been excommunicated, they didn't give up on themselves. They decided to make a step. As much as they were telling themselves, we shall be killed, we are only four, we are people full of leprosy, let's give up. They didn't give up. They moved to the enemy's camp. And we are told that as they were moving, God magnified their footsteps, that the enemy had like it was a whole battalion coming towards them, and they fled, leaving money, silver, and gold. So even for us, it is important, even it doesn't matter at what level. Try your best to see what you can do. Because mostly what we want is uh, issues of access of information, issues of openness, issues of accountability and issues of transparency. Mm -hmm. And once our leaders know that the people they are leading today, and, I, and I'm happy because the, the, the general Wanjiko out there is not the Wanjiko we had in 1992 who could not talk. We have we, we, we have a, we have a democratic space. Civil societies and the church have made effort to build capacity of our people. They are now informed more than they were 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. So let us not just give up, but let us ask ourselves in our own small ways: to what extent do we engage? Even your local MCA, when you meet him, don't tell him, "Hey, nunua chai leo, nunua nunua choma leo." Ask him. By the way, what have you done in regard to? Ask even the county, the the, the, the MCAs, and ask them at the county level how many registrations have you made mm -hmm. in regard to one two three things simple things that you understand from your own level so i want to say that it is not important that we just keep quiet and watch things go as uh, the taxpayers money is used mm -hmm. this is a good discussion karen jugona sante sana says a good discussion maureen malinda you're saying a good discussion kevin ikoha you're saying a good discussion agnes wamboy i can see you thank you very much jacinta yvonne asante isaac ngogi asante ashley kanini you're 
interesting, good discussion, Asante San. Kristen, still on you, in a, a fraction of one minute, what are the challenges, therefore, of, of uh, ensuring that this budget process of make uh, sense at the devout uh, level? My sister Jacqueline, even before I specifically talk about the challenges mm. for, for the budget-making process, mm. it is important to understand that the budget-making process is enshrined in the devolution process. <laughs> and uh, devolution process itself has its own challenges, and that is why to some extent we realize that even the budget-making process has challenges. Mm. Key among those which I had highlighted was that we don't have a particular act governing the issue of people's participation in the budget making process. Mm. However, it is important for the people to engage with, with the county government in areas that they understand best to ensure that at least they are enlightened on the on, on the budget making process. Mm -hmm. Number two, you realize that many members of the public are not enlightened. Mm -hmm. And those who know are like, for as long as I can afford, and there is someone who cannot afford, it is not my business to ask on behalf of the person who cannot afford. Let us know that we are our brother's keeper. Whether I afford today, I may not afford tomorrow, let me know that I should, I should be there to stand for, for, for my brother. Then we have members of the public who are not aware of their important, their important presence in the process because the 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 higher maendeleo yanakuja kwao hayaendi kwa wale county governors no hayaendi kwa wale members of the county assemblies they are the people who are supposed to actually identify themselves with the resources and with the powers that have been devolved from the national government to to to, to the to the county governments the last one and and, and most important is a lack of political goodwill and especially from the county governments, you'll find that even through the vetting process of the county executive members to uh, any committee, and here we are talking about the budget making process, you'll find that even the vetting of who becomes now the, the county executive committee member for finance, mm -hmm. it is like now people have to lobby around because you're not only looking per se at the integrity of the person in terms of accountability and transparency, but who is this person who I can um, twist? So we lack political goodwill. And when we have political goodwill, I want to believe that in, where we have a, I keep challenging my MCA and I tell him, oh, why don't you organize a small meeting in one of the village in the world and ask us to come and talk to your people on, on matters that the people would be interested in, in, in knowing. The other day I visited one of the speakers and, and I was telling him, we want to build the capacity of your people. We know the crop of MCAs we have, many of them are those who we are councillors before. They were not lawmakers. So what is this that we can do to build the capacity of, of, of the people? So when we have political goodwill, I'm sure we'll be good to go because everybody will, will, will be happy about service delivery. And the common people only want service delivery. So let us have goodwill. Let us have change of attitude from our people when they are called to meetings. Let them go and let the meetings be called in good time. Mm -hmm. Well, my dear listener, I wish we could go on and on, but we have to end it there. But as we end it, Mudama, no. I know one of the way forward is that we have to continue civic education daily. No. No. I'll give you uh, uh, five and will comment to give us two of your way forwards and your closing comment very first. Okay, thank you. Thank and then you for Christine, this. I also give you, give me yeah, two way yeah, forwards and your yeah. closing comment because yeah, we need to move forward yeah. despite the challenges that we yeah. have. Mm. Yes, uh, Chris, um, Jackie, thank you for this. These are the fundamentals. One, the destiny of this country is in our hands. Mm -hmm. uh, we owe it to ourselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm saying this because uh, as a citizen and uh, as a civic educator for many years, uh, the, the kind of intolerance I'm seeing in this country mm -hmm. is going to get us not in the right way. Mm -hmm. It's a recipe for, uh, for chaos. Mm -hmm. The rule of law is fundamental. Mungozo wa sheria na katiba ni muhimu sana iwapo katiba itatuongoza na sheria itatuongoza. Mm -hmm. Lazima tuweze kuangalia mambo yako sasa hili tuweze kuheshimiana. Asante yeah, sana. Mm -hmm. Christine, way forward and your closing comment and make it first. Uh, this is what I would want to say to both the citizenly and the elected members, especially the political class. Mm -hmm. We need to take stock. We need to consult. That is very, very important. Mm -hmm. And let us not be afraid what will the local citizenry come to say? A good leader will sit and listen. And people only want to be heard. 
So can we have consultative forums, either at the ward level or at the county level, and take stock of what has happened to ensure that in the few remaining years before 2017, we are able to do better. And particularly now that we are already done with the 1st of September for this year, we should take stock and see how the next year will be better for the common good of our people. Mm -hmm. Well, I take this opportunity to thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for gracing this show. Remember, this was a, a very special devolution program courtesy of Kenya Human Rights Commission and uh, in conjunction with the truck. And we have been discussing the benefits of devolution and therefore after that what next how do we bring in money to realize the devolved system christine nimeshukuru sana thank you mudama thank you very much thank you for you my dear listener we thank you we don't take you for granted your participation is very key and that is the beginning of citizen participation morning tide continues but remember this is your time that you control you control the playlist. Jackie, when you keep it, you go high enough. You sell me a wheelie or two. So, so Christian, you talk about selling me a nine. Oh, the Catholic faith in the Archdiocese of Nairobi, right from the Rocco Ordinary, His Eminence John Kant Nojue, the Auxiliary Bishop Kamau, all the clergy, all the faithful. We love you. We cherish you. We adore you. Let us continue with the good work of Jesus Christ. Mudama nikikuache utasema nimekubagua sasa kukubagua basi uta Namshukuru huyo huyo muumini mwenzangu akayole kwa kuuliza swali nimejisikia kumbe we get tuned to our radio programs thank you Asante sana Well my dear what else do I say but to give you this beautiful music and this one I'm giving it to Christine because I know she loves it Dandora 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 Dandora